All right, so we are going to build the frame and set up the new handy quilter moxie on it in this area of my sewing room right here. Let's start. So here's a cool thing that Handy Quilter did is they teamed up with this app, B-I-L-T. You can search for it in the App Store. Once you open it up, you just uh, search for a product. So we're going to type in Moxie, and then I'm just going to press search, and then it pops up. So here is the Handy Quilter Moxie, so that's the machine part of it set up. Then we have the Handy Quilter Loft Frame, and this is the Little Foot Frame. This the Little Foot Frame is the one that's set up at 5 foot. That's not the one I have. I have the Handy Quilter Loft Frame, and I have it set up to 8, or I'm going to set it up to 8 foot. So this is the one that I want to select. And then it's going to start to walk me through. Look at that. It says, for two people, it takes about one hour, and there's 60 steps. So this is the frame we're going to be building. I hit Start. And then, oh, needs an update, so we'll go ahead and update that. And then it'll tell me all the different pieces, what tools I need, and you go step by step, going through the steps of this how to build it. This procedure will assist you with assembling the HQ loft frame. All right, so I need these tools, so I'm going to go ahead and gather that. Then I'm just going to continue to go through here so that I can put the entire frame together. All right, so I finished setting up the frame in the machine and actually off camera, I've already gone ahead and played around with it a little, put up a sample test quilt and all that so that I can uh, take notes and figure out exactly what types of videos I'm gonna be bringing to you. Now, if you have a handy quilter moxie or another type of long arm, or maybe you're new to long arm quilting or in the market for one, go ahead and give me your feedback in the comments below. Let me know what types of videos you'd like to see me make for you here. Now that I have this machine set up in my home studio, it's gonna be a whole lot easier for me to film tutorials and videos and do live streams right here because I have my setup for all the other types of videos that I do and make in this sewing room. So I'd love your feedback. Let me know in the comments below. Now in this video, I also wanted to go ahead now that I'm on the other side of building this setup uh, to give you my top tips in case you are getting a moxie before you jump into it or maybe uh, before you go out and purchase one. Now I will include a link in the description box below on where you can buy this machine. 
It, as you saw in the video, it comes to you shipped in the mail. You get it in three boxes. But my first tip is don't rush it. Take your time. Now, although the Build app says that it takes about, I think, what did it say, an hour or two with two people, don't rush it. If you know you only have a two and a half hour window to get this set up, I would not take that time to build it because you want to be double and triple checking the steps. There's a lot of screws that go into the frame, especially, and some require washers, some don't. So you don't want to overlook those kinds of things because then you'll have to go back and kind of fix your mistake. So just slow down, take your time. Now, my second tip is that although the instructions say for two people to put it together, you can put it together by yourself as you saw me do. I didn't have help from anybody. I moved all the boxes, uh, set up everything, carried the machine on here. So of course you are going to need to be able to handle the physical movement. As you saw, it was a lot of like squatting on my knees, sitting down, standing up, bending over, picking things up. So if you can do that kind of stuff, then you'll definitely be able to put this together. It's not that big of a deal. If you do need help, uh, because some of the, the exercises and movements that you need to make require more mobility that you can perform safely, right, by yourself, then go ahead and get one or two extra people to help you. I will say if you have more help screwing in all the screws, that part will go a whole lot faster. I had to do it all by myself, so it didn't quite take me an hour or two to do, but I was stopping, going to cook meals, come back, and so if you have a few days or over a weekend to put it together, that is what I would recommend. That way you have some downtime, your brain can breathe a little bit as you go back and take everything nice and slowly, step by step. Now my third tip has to do with setting the height of the frame. You have to remember that when you're going through the steps and if you're following through an order on the app or with the printed instructions, when they have you adjust the leg height for the frame, you are doing so with the leg upside down. Okay, so you have to think in mind where you're going to set the bolt that's going to establish the finish height of the frame upside down. So stop and think about that and say, okay, if I put it in this opening for this height, the leg is going to be flipped the other way when the frame is built and in the correct orientation. So I don't want you to set it like at the lower setting when you're like five foot 10 and needed it set at the highest setting. So adjust for that, slow down. Again, that goes hand in hand with slowing down and taking your time. All that to say, once you have the frame set up, if you find that you're too hunched over and maybe it's set too low for you, you will be able to pretty easily adjust the height at that point. A couple things that you'll need to do probably, uh, and I haven't had to do this, but I'm just thinking ahead, uh, is remove the machine obviously from the carriage and the frame so you don't have it swinging back and forth. And then you'll definitely need some help, either one or two more people, because the adjustments need to be done on the legs, okay? So you need people to kind of help stabilize the frame for you as you're adjusting without all the weight just bearing down on you as you're trying to make that change. Hopefully that makes sense. But yes, you will be able to adjust the height. I'll give you an example. I'm about five foot nine inches tall and the frame has increments of the different elongated oval openings for you to set the leg height to. And it'll tell you like five foot two, five four, five six, five eight, five ten. I like my frames, my long arm frames to be set a little bit higher on the waist so that I'm not quite too hunched over. Plus I have a high waist and I find that where my body bends is a little bit higher than somebody whose torso to leg ratio is a little bit more proportional. I'm shorter in the torso and have super long legs. So my setup is a little different. And I say that to say that you don't have to set it at what your height is, right? Set it somewhere in that range and then as you start using your machine, you can adjust it accordingly whether it needs to be lower or a little bit higher, okay? So for me, I set it at the five foot 10 height and when it's in this orientation set up on the ground, done and ready to use, it is the fifth hole down and the bolt is in the top of that oval opening, okay? So higher up, the first opening is 5'2", the second opening is 5'4", 5 5'6", five 5'8", five like that. So mine is in the bottom one, the fifth one down, which when I was adjusting it to that height, remember the leg is upside down, it was actually the first hole instead of the last. So just keep that in mind, slow down, you got this. Now my fourth tip is to use both of the instruction resources, the built app for the frame and the machine, because remember I showed you uh, that you can select each one in that built app with the instruction manuals, goes through every step. You also have images there that you can use on your phone. You can open it, 
close it, swipe it, turn it around. All the little steps are in there on how to use the app so that you can get a more visual representation of the way things are oriented and where things need to go in case the written instructions uh, is not enough for you to kind of like get the step that you're supposed to be doing. Then you also have the printed instructions that come in the machine box. Okay. You get the printed instructions and those will also have text instructions as well as black and white diagrams that you can reference. So even if you're completing this by yourself, like I did, having both of those references or resources at your disposal are definitely a great plus. All right, y'all, so those are my tips for setting up the Handy Quilter Loft Frame as well as the Moxie uh, 15 inch long arm quilting machine. If you have any questions for me, leave them below. Let me know again what types of videos you'd like to see me work on featuring the Moxie. And then if you'd like to see a video tour of my home studio. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Feel free to share it across the different social media sites with your crafty friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.